So let's go and evaluate these. Um, and again, hopefully you guys can confirm on your calculator. But really, guys, from the unit circle, remember the sine inverse. Remember, this is the inverse function, right? So if I say the sine inverse of 1 half, via the unit circle, we know that answer in degrees, not radians, is going to be 30 degrees. right? And again, this kind of comes into that point. Well, remember, from the unit circle, we have 30 degrees right here. But you say, oh, but what about 150 degrees? That's true as well. But remember, sine is restricted, right? The sine inverse function has that domain restriction of sine to, to be angles only between, um, only in the first and the fourth quadrant. That's why 30 degrees is the only answer, right? Because it's an inverse function. You can't have more than one answer. Agreed? OK. And then so negative 1 half is just going to be down here. Right? You don't want to go outside of the restriction, right? You don't want to say 330 degrees. That goes outside of the restriction. So therefore, we use negative 30 degrees. Now to do cosine, we say cosine of 1 half. We say, oh, that was going to be pi over 3, or 60 degrees. And then negative, cosine's negative not in the fourth quadrant, but cosine's negative in the second and the third quadrant. So it's going to be one of these two. But again, it can't be down here, because if you remember the restriction for cosine inverse, or the restriction upon or given to us on the fourth cosine inverse, is asked to be in the first and the second quadrant. Sorry, I don't want to put that. So therefore, you can see that our answer is there. So for cosine of 1 half, my bad, that was there. Cosine of 1 half is going to be 60 degrees. And then cosine of negative 1 half, because cosine is negative over here, is going to be 120 degrees. Yes? So remember a couple things. One, you can remember there's only one answer when we're doing those inverse functions. And again, two, remember inverse functions, we're looking for the angle, right? That's why we use our inverse functions. Um, but now, what I'd like you guys to do is let's take a step back and let's just kind of look what is the relationship? Would you guys see any relationships or anything interesting with these numbers? Anything interesting? Not looking for, just looking to kind of go off of what you guys see. Yes? Negative 1 half is double, or the angle degree is double what regular 1 half mm -hmm. Right? Very good. Anything else? Yes? Anything that can be defined is just some positive negative? Yeah, just what's positive negative. Right? Anything else? OK, so again, let's review. If I give you the cosine, like the 1 half, cosine 60 is uh, cosine 1 half 60. And then if I do cosine negative 1 half, that's 120. So you just double it. And again, does that make sense? If you have 60, and then it's supposed to be that same angle, the same value in the second quadrant, yeah, it's just going to be double. right? It doesn't matter what the angle is. If it's going to be that same, if it has the same reference angle in the second quadrant, it's just going to be double that angle. right? Because again, these are mirrored image. We're in the same thing for sine. Whatever this angle is, if you have the negative value, it's just going to be a reflection about the x-axis. So it's just going to be negative, right? Now, the other thing also you can mention is, do you guys recognize the, um, you guys can also recognize the relationship, or at least you can see that sine and cosine, that co-function relationship. Remember the co-function identities? That kind of, that relationship works again, just to kind of throw that out there. Um, but anyways, let's talk about triangles, because that's what this chapter is about, triangles. I think you guys agree that 30 degrees is not going to be within a triangle, right? Or negative 30 degrees, I'm sorry. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, right? Can't have a negative degree in the, con in the context that we've been dealing with so far. So the only triangle, or the only angles that we're going to be using inside triangles is going to be 30, 60, and 120, right? And again, this also makes sense. Am I ever going to get an angle larger than 180 degrees, like using cosine inverse? Yeah. No, right? So that's good. Cosine inverse, the restrictions keep our angles, right? So for cosine, our restriction keeps us between 0 and 180 degrees, which is good, because we wouldn't want angles larger than 180 for a triangle. Well, what about sine? The restrictions on sine gives us negative angles, which that's not helpful for us. But it only gives us angles between 0 and 90. That's a problem, because is all angles in a triangle acute? No. So when we're using sine inverse, and we're trying to find angles, and we're trying to use sine inverse, which was the law of sines, which was last class period, it doesn't give us the, uh, the acute, or I'm sorry, the obtuse angle, if that is the angle. It's only going to give you the acute version of it. Yes? Huh? Yes. But I'm saying not every triangle that you have is, always has acute angles. Right? So what I'm saying is, 
if there is an obtuse angle, right, the law of sine or sine inverse is not going to give you the obtuse angle. It's only going to give you the acute version of that angle. Okay? And so we'll talk about that a little bit, um, a little bit more. But my point that I'm trying to bring to you is, so a lot of times that was the issue with the, the ambiguous case last class period, was we didn't know if it was, we didn't know if the angle was acute or obtuse. We didn't have enough information, right? Remember angle side side was not enough information. And again, so we don't have enough information to determine what it is, but then sine only gives us the acute answer. So that doesn't help us out either, right? That's why we had, that's why we worked on finding the height and identifying them. For cosine though, that tells us if we, if we have an obtuse angle, it's going to tell us, right? So we don't have to worry about that. So that's good. So if, when we use inverse sine, we use the law of sines. So if we're going to be using inverse cosine, we're going to, that's going to come from the law of cosines. So there's your new rules.